I don't want to say that this is a um, a particular character, but I'm showing you how it would look up here on this particular character. And maybe it'd be better if she wasn't on the mannequin. But you can see that it could be right here. Okay. So I want you to try and look at these figures. You can see she's three-dimensional. She has a sleeve that would go over and hook onto the finger to keep it her sleeve down. Let's look at that up close. Wait, so you said you had to draw three-dimensionally. How do we draw three-dimensionally versus like how we usually draw two-dimensionally? No, you're looking at a three-dimensional object. So you're just going to draw uh, by instead of looking at a two dimensional object, which is a painting, and I realize that you're looking at it in a format that's two dimensional, but you're actually looking at something that's three dimensional. Do what I have always said, which is to start by drawing the body, and then we can look at the different shapes and figure. This one has a, a figure right down the center. And I'm going to back it up. Are, are we drawing just like the, the mannequin, like in the dress, or are we drawing the head, the arms, and the legs? Yeah, we're drawing and everything. But I okay. just wanted to think about mostly the fact that you've got something that you can look at with folds. I'll get Henry over here. Simpler character to look at. We'll put him over here. I'll give him a hat. So you should just be drawing. Start drawing anything right now. We can you can draw even while we're sit, finishing setting up. You can just draw the figure. You can draw to the waist. And then we'll back up. I'm just trying to get you a some kind of a detail. So are we supposed to draw both of them? You can pick one. Okay, cool. And I will also get the Henry because he's gonna, he's very, he's got some elaborate action going on here. I just want you to be able to look at different textures and uh, make some different choices, okay? And let's get him. I had this I'd set up a different way, but I realized the, the light is from the makeup lights is better if you can see them this way. Okay. Now that brown board is fine. Brown board is fine. It's an easier background than white. We're going to give you some contrast to draw against. Okay, that should give you a better. Contrast. And then I'll put Henry right here. This is tricky because he's wearing about 50 pounds of clothes right now. Okay. 
Is there a way for you to move the mannequin on, I believe your left to like a little bit further so we could see the full outfit? Uh, this one? Uh, yes, the one with the hat. Gray and black? Yes. Gray and black? Uh, bring him back, yeah, so, because uh, I, I can't see his lower body at all. I'm not sure. Uh, I can see if I can elevate him. It's difficult in this format. Let's see. What if I elevate this? Hold on a second, you guys. Okay. I'm wondering if I can give you a different uh, viewpoint. Well, I'm just wondering if this, wow. We have such a limited choice. I hear, I'm very sorry about that with our camera angle. So let me, you're, you will be making, <clears throat> yeah, I think I have to, let's see if we can get him up. So. This is square. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. So we're going to try and give you some elevation to look at, and then we'll we'll do five minutes on each of the of the characters. Wait, so we are drawing all of them? No, but you can. But I want to. Some people may not pick this character. Uh, okay, so you're you're just switching them back and forth. Okay. Move his wheels. Okay. How's that? Now you've got him. Yeah, I can see him. Uh, as since he doesn't seem to have trousers, is it okay if we add like have different trousers. things? Like that? He's wearing a gown. Oh, okay. There are no trousers. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let me just give him move him a little bit, and let's see if we can also elevate the dress a little bit. So we can at least get two people here. Okay, see how the platform is? Match the platform. Garment. Okay, so you have two figures, right? We have two figures, full body. And if somebody wants to draw Henry, I'm sorry, we don't have him in the camera right now. But that's fairly, I would say that's a fairly good image. Except it's sideways. Oh, it's sideways for you? Yeah. Can you rotate your screen? Um, wait, that's not Henry. Uh, wait, I thought that was Henry. And look, um... Okay, let's try it this way then. I apologize. And let's see if I can get them a little higher. Wait, uh, so that character isn't Henry? You said uh, you don't have Henry. Diego, oh, yeah. there is no characterization here. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just giving you options of what to look at. So I'm sorry, I can't get the... Uh, 
So I took a screenshot when it was horizontal and then I can just flip the screenshot. Oh, you guys, what about that? Do you want to try that? Let me do that. So you see if you can do that technology of taking a screenshot. If you're low tech, don't worry. We're just doing the best we can. It's because the screen is rectangle. Thanks for helping. Mm -hmm. So how many of you are gonna try and take a screenshot with your computer and then you can actually rotate it? Because if that is the case, then I can put the other figure in and you can have the third figure as well. Yeah, it works okay. So now you have some feet on that guy. Uh, can I have something to stuck? Okay, so now you have him. Now, I'd, I just need to know from you if you need to see them a different direction. We will also be able to go in close up on them. And if you would like to see the other figure that is more elaborately dressed and will have... Um, a different kind of thing to draw. Is there anyone that has not yet taken their screenshot? Do you know how to take a screenshot, everybody? I just took a picture of it. Yes, you can absolutely take a photograph with your camera. Okay, you can just take a photograph with your camera. And then you can actually upload that onto your computer and then you can manipulate it. Just email it to yourself. Sue, what are you doing? I'm gonna take a picture with my camera. Okay, good, perfect. I have a question on the male figure on the left. Is that a collar above the um, black shirt underneath the striped? Are we talking this? Uh, a little above it. I like a little above it. Um, this is part under of the Oh, okay, perfect. Okay. So I'll give you more air. Oh, that's part of the hat? That's the hat. Oh, I thought it was like a neck thing. Right. Yeah, I thought it was a neck thing too. Yeah, it's a hat. Oops, no, gotta change my drawing. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the you first know? piece. Let's talk about each of them. That is attached to the gray with the gray trim, right? This would be a surcoat because he would be wearing a gown underneath there if we had a gown. So that's one thing. And then we have a sleeveless. It's gonna turn him for a minute. You see, we have a sleeveless piece that is laced under here. So this is a second item. Uh, what, what does the third figure look like? 
Okay, just a second. And then on the female figure, this is of course a male figure. The female figure, we have the gown with the girdle, right? The chemise at the neck. Very sheer chemise. I've given you a crown. You can also have the call, which I'll put on a separate piece with a cape. Okay, and her decorative trim at wrist and on the on the girdle. Um, so for the figure with the hat, do we do you want us to draw a head and or just yeah. okay. Yeah, draw a head. Okay. And you can draw a head on this lady if you'd like to draw this hat. I'll I'll put her up too. So notice that this has a wimple, which would this it wouldn't usually attach. It could tie under the chin, right? That covers it, and then her hair. Um, now, would you like to see the third figure? But I don't want to confuse you. I just want to show it to you, and then we can you may be able to take a screenshot of that as well. We have we have thirty minutes, so. We're just going to tuck him back here. We can, I think we can tuck right here and push this in this way. Okay, I'm going to pivot the camera just for a minute so that we can look at the third figure. And you can see he's wearing a full length orange gown, note the folds. And the reason I want to point this figure out is so that you can actually draw these. Notice that this is, you'll get folds and you can draw them because you're going to draw dark and light. Where the fold is sticking out is lighter and then there's dark. With a contrasting sleeveless gown and then a cape with a train. and a fur collar, okay? He has a crown, I'm not sure. Can you see that up there? So now we can take a look at these two. Let's see if we can elevate him just a hair. Uh, on that. A gray, one of these. So this is our third figure. If you'd like to take a screenshot, we're going to lift him up in just a minute.
just a sec while I look up here. Okay, so do you see the platform? Okay, so we've given some height to this figure so that we can take a look at it. We'll stay here for five minutes. I want you to think about the vertical line of the garment on the man on the mannequin or the figure, and then how that mirrors the architecture or the curved line, how that would mirror medieval castle architecture. and that you're drawing some layering on top of it. How do you get separation between the front and the back? So on the woman's figure, you're going to put some dark behind this, and then the cape will be lighter so that we see the figure is revealed on both sides. Two more minutes in this position and then I will transfer. I've added another piece to the gray and black figure so that we can practice drawing something else. You can start a new drawing. So two more, two or three more minutes. I know that practice works. That's why I'm asking you to draw for 30 minutes. Keep drawing, don't stop. Don't allow yourself to say, I'm done. Look at it carefully. Are your proportions within our proportionate line area? 
Start always with your proportion. Even though you're looking at a clothed, clothed figure, you do see the proportion of the body. Where is halfway? One, two, three, four, halfway on the body. And if you, if you don't have it that way, and you need to add more length, just draw more lines down there. Okay, I will be moving back to include the male figure in black and gray. And you'll see he now has an additional item. Get all three of them in here. Okay, so we've added a cape to him to keep it on. It's crisscrossed and wrapped around with back and tied. It also is uh, more than floor length and has a generous train. So you have to imagine the floor ending here and the cape working its way out from there. Do you know if you have to draw that cape before already drawing that figure on the left? Or is that optional? Diego, you know what? You can do whatever you want. This is allowed. Okay, just that. There's no rules. What you're doing is you're trying to get experience of drawing a wide variety of things. So if you've got this figure pretty well down, just add this on top. Try to figure out how you can add a line of band of fur trim here, and then give yourself a line that's undulating down here to indicate the folds of the, the folds of the bottom of the garment. You know, don't, this is, this is a time to be very adventurous, to really try to see everything that you can, take advantage of all the materials that are in front of you, and draw as much as you can. This is, this is not a time to think about a shortcut and how to do less. We have still several minutes left. And what I will do is I will uh, pose each of these figures and take a picture with my cell phone and put them on to a lab assignment page. So, you'll have a place to upload and then you'll have a place to reference a photo that I've taken as well. How's that sound? It's something that you could practice drawing, you know, two or three more times, or maybe there's something about these or one of these characters or one element that you feel like you can incorporate into a rough sketch for your play because you could draw each of these three individual elements, the undergown, the sleeveless gown, the cape, maybe those could be on different characters. So there's a lot of information that you can get from redrawing and, in, and drawing something that is in keeping with a time period. Not exactly Poulain's, but a pointed shoe. Not nearly exaggerated enough. I always want you to draw to please yourself. You're not drawing to please me. Yeah. 
Six more minutes of drawing. Think about if you can see the design indicated on the trim of the dress, or maybe a little bit in the shape of the cape. See a little bit of it. Is that something you want to include? And wrapping up, see if you can identify any details that maybe you haven't drawn, like the clasp on the gray cape on the woman's figure in the center, or possibly to the left on your screen, and then the chain closure between the clasp. I just wanted to double check, but the um, the cape on the male figure with the fur lining, the floral print is a part of that cape, correct? Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. And the interior looks like this. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thank I you. It, I would have made it inside out because that's more interesting. And then you can think about what would that look like, Cassandra, from the stage? Would it, would, if you were viewing it from 20 feet away, would you think it a bit as floral or would it just kind of blend into a texture? And do you want to represent it as a texture instead of a floral? Is it more of a texture and, or is it like a floral pattern to it when you look at, at it like up oh, close? It's really, that's a very interesting question. Uh, we have, so we have two minutes. So I'm going to do some close up work so that you can actually see these things. So this has a 
floral, overall floral design, but each one of these pieces is also raised. So it does have a texture. You can see that it's raised here, as well as a metallic thread, which also gives it a, gives it a broken surface texture. So it does have both the floral design and the texture when you see it up close. Mm. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Just to give you an idea about that. Then going mm. to the trim, I don't know if we can, there we can see it up on the top. There you go. See how fur shows the density and the dark and light of the pile of the fur? Mm -hmm. okay. The man's gown, which is, it's actually, this is a form of corduroy. We talked about the fact that it has loft. Corduroy has a depth right here. It's a pile, but it, this also is somewhat reminiscent of chain mail, isn't it? It's a corduroy reminiscent of chain mail. Going up to his collar, how does his fur, that fur look? See, it's a little bit scragglier and longer. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the gray down the center wasn't continuation of fur. The gray down the center, Yeah. he had a gray collar and then the gray down the center yeah. is not fur, that's right. See how it's a texture. I know we're in an imperfect world, you guys. This is just, it's just trying to gather information. And then you can see the hood, the actually the more like a, it's actually becoming a flat cap, but it was from a chaperone. Our woman, multiple layers of cut fabric to create a broader trim with a trim appliqued on the side, the closures for the cape held in place by a chain. Actually held in place, this would have been across a flesh tone. You see this flesh tone, which would disappear on stage. And then the texture of this cape is very interesting and it is translucent. You can actually see through it. So it's a leaf pattern, and this is called a burnout cut pattern when we have this translucency so that when this character moves, we would see this kind of a thing happen. So again, a very interesting and ethereal effect. And the very sheer, sheer, sheer cloth of the chemise. This is, this is four layers, and you can see my, here, I'll give you one layer. See my finger behind it, how sheer it is? Mm -hmm. A delicate crown. And then the other male figure, a large knot, gold knot to hold the big fur decorative cape. This is a longer fur, more of a sheep, woolly sheep fur. And this is feeling, you know, it has the feel and the age of a, of a sheep that has been out in the dirt, which is very typical. A rough felted cloth, this purple. See how you, how you really feel the nubs on top of this? Yet an interesting lining to the sleeve and a decorative trim around the edge. The reason why I did that is because when he, that this character lifts his arms up, you'd see this as an audience member. You'd see inside of the sleeve like that and get that extra pop of color and design and stripe. A metallic braid on top of the sleeveless gown, which is in fact a stripe. Be easier to see if I had that they are falling together in folds. So you don't necessarily see them. Again, it's something that would be revealed. It's one of those great things of a costume, a surprise when the character moves, right? So that's kind of an exciting, it gives an excitement to the costume when there's a little surprise when the character moves. And then on the inside, the metallic stripe lining. So both sides equally as embellished so when we see this character coming towards us, we'd see this, and then we see the outside. And then the gown underneath, rather simple. This is a 
a two way called a changeable because from one direction, if we go across the grain, it's darker than if we go with the grain. So it's, it's woven in two colors. And then pleated up at the top to give you these folds. Remember we talked about this representative of the graduation gown. It's one of our vocabulary redrawings. And then where his hardware would attach so that the actor doesn't have to worry about having something fall off. We never want something to fall off on stage or have the actor unduly worry about it. And then embellished by again, a three inch gold threaded trim. So like I said, I will take a picture of each of these and I will upload them to our site and I'll give you an assignment page so that you can continue working on these, okay? So thanks everybody. Um, I appreciate you coming and giving Nancy your consideration and let's uh, have a great weekend and stay safe out there. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's about the evaluation thing. That, yeah. So it's asking me like, what did I enjoy about the course but we're not finished. No, no, so here's the thing. Don't fill those out yet, okay? Okay. Uh, we will have, you will have an instructor that comes and we'll give you some information about what to do. We only have, um, I think those surveys are open until April. So you can wait, oh, okay. you don't need to do them right now and you can wait over a greater length of time. So that's why I said, please expect to get an email for information. I didn't intend for you to go ahead and do them. I can't see them. I can't even open them. All I could do was move them to the course. Uh -huh. But the, um, the evaluators are going to actually, it'll, uh, we'll, one of them will be here the 15th and the, they're coming that week. So they'll observe the class uh, in Zoom land and they would normally come in person. So you'd actually see them in person. So okay. don't, don't rush to fill that out at all. Well, thank you for that question. Cause it's, it's, cause it's past tense. It's like, what did I enjoy? Well, like I'm still enjoying it. So. Well, they, um, they sent them out and then like a few days later, they said, you haven't responded. Don't forget. Yeah. So they're going to send a reminder, but I'm, but I'm just letting you know they're open for more than a month. Okay. You know, okay. that's, that's an automated um, response thing. So they'll get, send you a tickle like in a week or something. Then if you haven't responded, they'll send it to you again. But but we're just in the beginning stages right now, so I wouldn't worry about it so much. But if you want to, go ahead. Maybe and maybe not that you enjoyed it most. And and I don't know what your options are, but you can say, uh, to this date, I have enjoyed X, you know, something okay. like that. And who knows what's going to come next because I've never taken this class before. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was kind of implying. Like, I don't know, she she might just say, okay, everyone fails next week. You know, so oh, yeah, you know, I know that's not what you would do, but I was like, maybe in May we should be doing this by the time the finals over and stuff. Yeah, no, it's um, there is a there's a like a time frame that is required. So it was required that is open March one through like April something, and then remember, then we have two more weeks in April because then everything has to be wrapped up, and then we have to have a meeting, and then there has to be signatures, and then we have to have finals. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, I just have a question about one of the assignments that we uh, do Friday. Uh, yeah, let's talk um, about the assignments due Friday. Uh, uh, right, right now or breakout room or something? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, any other questions before um, we go or you have any uh, anything else? Because I'll stick here, Diego, I'm opening a room for you. And then uh, I can happily meet anybody in a room. And if you have any other questions, and as I respond to your assignments, please contact me if you have any questions, okay? Because I would like to have a full, well-rounded discussion so that we can have the most success possible in class. Thank you. Thank and you. Of course, have a great weekend, be safe. Maybe see the movie. Even though I have that movie at home, I'm thinking about seeing it because it would be so fun.
nice work this week, Odalis. I loved looking at your assignments. Oh, sorry, I was drawing a figure. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, Diego. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's about the paint assignment that we did uh, last week, the uh, little painting one. Uh, on so, Wednesday? The one on uh, Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. The, this okay. one. Uh, so we're supposed to, uh, I don't know if I did it correctly. Here's me trying to mix the oh, colors. Oh, you're so worried about doing everything correctly. I love that. But um, you, know, you don't really have to worry about it. Hold on, let me get to the assignment, okay? Let me see if I can pull it up so we can really talk about something that's um, actual instead of theoretical. Hold on. Let's see. You're talking about this is the one that's due Friday. Yeah, so I didn't grade it yet. Let me go to uh here we go. And let me screen share. Is this one you're talking about? Get to know your color uh, media yeah okay so the concept is what does each look like on paper so i've i've put them down you know every single color pencil these are color pencils yeah what? these are from uh my, 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 for my camera these are all the from all the color pencils i have on okay yeah. so let me so this is the assignment you're talking about let me and then you're going to upload it and then you're uh, gonna, I'll, I'll make it sure if I did it correctly or something. Or, oh, I, know. I know you're so worried about doing everything correctly, but you know what? You just, you do things fine. Uh, hold on. Wait, so hold it up to your camera. Let me pin you just a sec. So I oh, hold on. Let's stop recording. <laughs>